So let's just spend a few moments looking at what happens with compiling um, a program, compiling a bit of C code. So in this example here, we have this uh, code that is compiling foo.c. So let's take a look at foo.c to see what's actually there. Um, I have this under, what is it, c intro. So foo.c looks like this. It's basically just the main routine and, um, and another routine, another function called my average. And I'd like to be able to compile this. So if I go back over here to the terminal window, um, I'm going to clear this screen to get rid of some of this excess information. And then let's look, uh, take a look to see where we are. And what you see is that when I run ls to list, um, I only have a few things that are in my folder. So I'm in the workspace and it has a read. Um, and so I'm looking to get into or change directory so that I can work with code um, or work with actually foo.c directly. So if I cd, change directory, cd, to drop into the code um, directory. And if I do an ls there, you see I have a number of folders. And those folders that you see in blue are the same folders that you see over off to the left here. And then if I do another cd, and this time I go into c intro, and I can just hit tab and it'll complete it for me with the matching um, argument. So CD takes me, CDC intro takes me down to that folder. If I run LS again, you see that I have different colored files here. Green are the executables. White um, typically are gonna be files that are of a text format. And there's nothing here in blue, so there are no directories. So what I'm looking at inside of C intro is what you're seeing over here off to the left. Um, so if I wanted to, for example, confirm that foo.c is uh, what I think it is, I could do something like um, maybe cat foo.c, which just kind of, um, you know, Takes what's it takes its argument and spits it out, concatenates it to the terminal, or spits it out to the terminal. Let's clear that. Or I can say uh, more foo.c, and it would kind of dispense it, deliver it one page at a time. So it is the same foo.c that I uh, would anticipate it, uh, that I anticipated it being, and. Now, what I'd like to do, though, is see what I can do with this. Uh, I can compile, let's clear this. I can compile foo.c by using gcc, right? So that is my compiler. And then if I say foo.c, nothing shows up here. But when I run ls, I know that there was an executable created. So in order for me to see which one it was, let's do something like ls minus al, which will give me a longer listing with all of the information about the files. So this time, when I look at it, just based on date, the most recent one would be the February 14th one, and today's February the 14th. Um, that is the most recent file that was executed, given that it's 1.30 right now, 1.31, um, a dot out is the file that was created. So my executable is a dot out. So I can verify that by running a dot out. So what I'll do is I'll run it by saying, in this directory, um, run a dot out. So executables, I run in this way, in this directory, uh, run this particular file, this executable a.out, gave me an average of 2.5, and that's the average of zero plus five. And just to confirm that we're getting the numbers that we would expect, if I change a to three, right? And then hit the up arrow a couple of times, compile it, and then run it again, the three plus five, is eight and divide that by two, I get their average, which is four. So I'm compiling it. Um, now, one of the challenges is that you're going to have many 
txt files, and they all can't be named a dot out. So if you want to give it a particular name, you might say gcc foo.c as we did, but this time what I'm going to do is say name the output file dash o um, foo, and that will become the executable. So now I run this, and then if I look at what's here, there is this file foo that has been uh, that has been created. And if I want to run foo, I can just simply uh, type in its name, uh, directory, oh, and that will run that file for me. So I can give my executable a name by using the dash o switch. Now, if I want to look at um, what some of the other options are, oops, I could do a GCC and help, and it will give me some of the options that I can pass to my compiler. Um, so for example, if I'm compiling and I'd like to maybe ignore warnings of some, some, some type, um, I could do I could pass it some information here that would allow me to do something like that. Um, what else could I do? Um, then I can do intermediate steps where I could just simply compile and assemble and, and create the assembly code. So just to show you what that would look like, if I wanted to look at, uh, let's do maybe a dash S. So I won't actually create executable. I just want to see the assembly language. Um, so compile only, do not assemble or link. I'm going to use a dash S. When I do this, uh, that will be this command here, dash S. Now, dash S is a file that's been created, and my C code has now, um, is now showing over here in, um, in assembly language. So that's just an example of some of the things you can pass to the compiler on the command line.